Welcome back to Undulations. The repairs at my place are done through the holidays, and so I'm trying to get back to a more regular upload schedule. Thanks a lot for watching the channel. Thanks for the comments. So today I want to focus on the Bit Ranger from Basil Instruments. This guy is a device that I really love and look forward to going into some detail on. But first, I want to talk to you about this one that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Okay, this is a circuit that is actually in this book, Timer, Op Amp, and Optoelectronic Circuits and Projects from the mid 80s, and it's called a stepped tone generator. It's based around the 556 timer circuit, which is two 555 timers, sort of in the same chip, and then a few other components. I've got them all right in there. You could make one for about five bucks. Now, I'll put a link down in the description in case that is the sort of thing you're interested in, but I really just bring it up that this one here, this is from Target. I got a kit and threw it together. Sounds nice. Question is, why would Target have a circuit from the 80s in a little kit? And the answer is that this circuit became a little bit modified where the speaker was removed it was given line out capability. People used it in live shows and that sort of thing because it's cheap and gives sort of a nice synthy sound. And this concept of step tone generation where I can use one potentiometer to go through the steps And then the other potentiometer to set the distance between those steps. So you can get some scales and arpeggio type sounds. And it's sort of a nice plucky sound too. And so I feel like the Basil Bit Ranger is kind of a kindred spirit to the Step Tone Generator, also known as a Atari Punk console that I just showed. Uh, let me play a little bit. So you can definitely hear the similarity, but the Bit Ranger has got an onboard LFO. It's got a literal farm of clocks that you can patch into other CV uh, patch points, and you can drive external gear with it. You can have it driven by external gear. So this guy is very powerful and very interesting to work with. I'm going to be adding in what I consider to be a sort of preset for it, which is just basically a switching device that lets you repatch very quickly. So I look forward to showing you guys that. Let's dive in. Okay, so first the general discussion of the Bit Ranger. We've got three main control knobs, the low frequency oscillator or LFO, the voltage controlled oscillator or VCO, and then the high frequency oscillator or HFO. And these two oscillators, I think as you may have seen in the introduction, there's sort of an interplay between them with this frequency stepping. The LFO, it's got both a low and a high setting, and it can go up to audio frequencies. Then there are four mode settings that are implemented by these two switches down here. So it's A and B, 1 and 2, and modes A1 and B1 are basically tonal modes, and modes A2 and B2 are noisy modes. And so this is also sort of reminiscent of the way things are done on the castle, which is also made by Basel Instruments. It's also worth noting that the LFO does something different to the audio signal, depending on what mode you're actually in. Then we've got the clock region down here, 
and this is super important as a way to provide signals that are basically pulse trains that are divisions of the clock that's set by the LFO and it ranges from half and that's the slash two down through all the way to dividing by 4096 so it's a lot of different uh, steps by two and you have a clock range that's basically a factor of 2000. I can't stress enough that the bit ranger is all about time where that you've got this wide range of timing that you have control over and it can be used for anything from the timbre of the sound to melodic parts and then even sort of song type structure. And then this region here with the MUX1 and MUX2 region, these are a way to bring the clock signals into the system. And I'm just gonna put a patch here so we can see this visually. And so while I don't really think of the uh, Bitranger as necessarily polyphonic in the traditional sense. It is a stereo device and a lot can be done with using the two channels independently. I should also point out that we're not just limited to the factors of two on clock tempo. There are these other so-called adventure bits that give variation in some of the tempos. And you can also patch to the LFO, of course, or some of these sync patch points to get more variations in the rhythm. And then up here we've got three control voltage points that allow us to use voltages coming from any signal down here on this region up to there to do basically the same function as turning a knob. And you can bring signals in from the outside on the sides. Those come out and can also be used to control things. And then lastly, I want to point out the byte section here. This is four patch points that you can send signals from the clocks or wherever into, and a stepped voltage is created from that. It influences the VCO, if you have the switch set for that, or you can send it to other places as well. So that is a very handy thing for creating variation. Okay, and the last thing before we start patching I feel like uh, it's important to point out that the Bit Ranger comes with a really nice manual that is terse, compact, but has a lot to it. And then towards the very end, there's just a block diagram of the device, which is great if you're just trying to figure out what's going on with it. Okay, so I'm going to try to go through this quick. start to add a little bit of melodic character to it. And so you can stop anywhere along the way patching, uh, make a note of it, and then uh, go back to it. So it's an evolving thing and uh, something that's quite creative. So that gives a nice idea of what this thing is able to do without very much effort, really. Okay, so at this point I want to start talking about the preset concept. And to do that, I'm going to build up a patch Okay, so this one's up and running, and it's got kind of a nice flow and some choppiness from the muting. And uh, one thing that I like is to take from somewhere on the byte and go to the HFO uh, bend, either left or right. That's the left. Right. 
maybe the data. Take your pick. We can uh, take some somewhere else. Down here. Okay. Or maybe we want to be at the E. And so, where I'm at here is that I've got a patch point that I like how it sounds, I like how it changes when I put it in different places, and even though I'm pretty good at doing the patching, it's still, it's not fluid, and so this is my thought to try and introduce something to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so I've taken the patch that I had and I've put something here that is a rotary selection switch. And this is what I'm talking about, at least in one example, of sort of a preset for the bit range. And so uh, the diagram for what I've got here is basically just a, a connection that can be selected between one of four choices. And so you can think of that as uh, one in going to four outs, or one out going to four ins, and it's uh, pretty versatile. And I've come to sort of think of these knob settings as sort of like a uh, pattern on a groove box where you can uh, jump back and forth. Okay, I think I'm going to have to split this stuff into two videos. In this one, we've talked about the selector switch style knob, and that's a way to route a single patch point to up to four other patch points just by turning a knob. It's very useful and a lot of fun to play with. In the next video, I'll show you a different type of knob that has a lot of possibilities. To close this one out, I'm going to use the bit ranger with some other devices, synthesizers, and you can see what it can do. All right, thanks for watching.